consistent public demand. He is back on Cabo Bay in L.A. Last time was too short, three segments not enough. And now he is dishing all and telling all, not holding back, Ricardo Brown, the first ever Phil Farner to play in the Philippine Basketball Association. So many controversies surrounding um, your playing years in the PBA, how you started and all that. But still, you uh, endeared yourself to your fans. Even to this day, they clamored to see you. Yeah, that really is amazing uh, that uh, um, the love and support that the Filipino fans showed me during my career as a player. But even today, uh, through social media, it's just it's very humbling and, and overwhelming. The, the re this reconnection process has been very heartwarming and uh, really is something special to me. And Ricky, you, you're saying reconnection because you were gone for a while. And why are you coming out now? You know, uh, I left in 1990. That was my last year of playing. Um, social media wasn't wasn't part of our our life at the time so basically out of sight out of mind and where this all started was uh, about a year and a half ago I came across a lot of my memorabilia that I had packed away and I kind of just dug in and went through it and relived um, 10 years of basketball in the Philippines and it really touched me and I started to share that with a few people uh, a few Filipino fans that, that uh, I was in touch with on Facebook, and I slowly started to share all of this memorabilia, and I saw how it touched people and how it inspired and, uh, you know, the nostalgia that it created, and it just evolved into something really, really special right now, and uh, that, was, that was how it all started, and, and today it's just, uh, it's fantastic. All right, I have more questions about that, but talking about how it all started, let's, you know, go back a few years, not too many years ago, but uh, you started, uh, your entry to the Philippines was to play for the Philippine national team, which at that time was being put together by Mr. Kuanko. Um, although there were many controversies, and now you're ready to speak about it now, because that RP national team was actually, uh, it actually featured players with not an ounce of Filipino blood. Tell me about that. You, you know, the original plan of Mr. Kawanko uh, is exactly what's going on in the Philippines now with the RP team today. Uh, and, of and MVP. Now it's Manny Pagamina. Yes, in the tail, and okay? it's, it really speaks of... of uh, you know, the, the, uh, the mind of Dan Ding, who was ahead of his time, uh, his goal was to bring glory to country. And um, the PBA, there's a, a, a political issue going on at the time with professional and amateur basketball. The professional players did not represent the country. So Mr. Kuanko decided to do something on his own, and his goal was to come to the States and find as many Filipino Americans as possible to reinforce the local lineup. It wasn't just Filipino Americans he wanted. He wanted some reinforcements. The problem that he encountered uh, was there weren't that many of us. There were only a few. So the next step was uh, to bring in American players uh, to represent the country that were available. And uh, long story short, we, uh, we ended up with a really strong, strong team. We only had two Filipino Americans. And we had five or six local Filipino players, and we had a handful of American players. And uh, because of that, the team wasn't embraced, you know, by the fans. Uh, we had an excellent coach in Ron Jacobs. And um, he's also non-Filipino. Yes, he's non-Filipino. Actually, the uh, coaching position was first offered to my coach at Pepperdine, Jim Herrick, okay. who later went to UCLA and won a national championship. Um, he turned down the, uh, the position, but he recommended Ron. Mm -hmm. who was available. And the Philippines were very, very fortunate to get a coach of Ron's caliber. He was, he was a sensational basketball coach, and, um, you know, he proved that over the years. But like, as you said, when it was first being introduced to the Filipino public, we didn't like that. The Filipinos didn't like that. No, absolutely not. They didn't like that. And uh, individually for myself, um, it created some problems as well because I was identified with that group. Right. Even though my mother's a Filipina. Yeah. There were so many comments and questions and in the media that I wasn't really a Filipino. But what were you thinking during that time? Did you, were you okay with staying with a team or did you want out or what were you thinking? Did you talk to Dan Ding? Did you, who did you talk to? Well, you know, my loyalty was to Mr. Kowanko and to the country. That's the reason I came there, is to play for the Philippines. And uh, I, I just, my mindset was, this is all just part of what we have to go through, that mm -hmm. there's going to be some serious growing pains along the way. 
um, I never realized that it was as bad as, as it really was. But it didn't make sense to have Filip non-Filipinos play for a Philippine national team. And we'll talk about that. The vision was good, but the means to get there was not really acceptable. We'll talk about that when we return on the show. Plus, more controversies because you also negotiated with CRISPA but ended up with great taste. More clarifications when we return. Don't go away.